Good morning. Thank you for joining us at this early hour. My name is Tony Kano, and I am the Executive Vice President and General Manager of the Imaging Technologies and Communications Group at Canon USA. We have something big news to share with you. But first, I would like to thank you for your support of Canon. I have been with Canon for 36 years, including almost 19 years at Canon USA. Even after all this time, I still get excited when we are about to unveil new products. I think you are really going to like what you see. And I can assure you that we have much more planned for the future. I would also like to talk with you a little about the power of imaging. In recent weeks, we have experienced a number of events, both worldwide and here at home. From the start of COVID-19 pandemic to the protest for racial equality and social justice, images have been captured to help tell the stories of those affected. At Canon, we view the power of imaging as something that can bring people together. The images captured are so impactful and can be used to help us realize our corporate philosophy of Kyosei. All people, regardless of race, religion, or culture, harmoniously living and working together into the future. As a leader in the imaging industry, Canon USA has always felt deep responsibility to ensuring that all members of our community feel valued and empowered to achieve their creative visions. Thank you again for your support of Canon. Now, the news you have been waiting to hear. I mean, it's, it's locked on, it looks good. It's like left, right, it won't, do you see that? It's, oh! So we're shooting on the, hi by the way, we're shooting on the new Canon, R I almost gave it away. The one thing they told me is just, just intro and then pass it along, dude, don't just, okay, I'll rewind. What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here. I am a filmmaker and photographer from Toronto, Canada, proudly flying the flag up north, doing my part, and if you could, can you grab that? Yeah, fold it, don't let it hit the ground, okay? It is my pleasure and honor to be able to be here today to welcome you, no matter where you're watching this from, your car, your lunch break, the bathroom, lunch break, wherever you're watching this from, get stoked, get excited, because we've been waiting for this day for a, a long time, a long time, and it's here, and it's, it's spicy. I don't know if you're, I don't know if you're ready for it. I don't know, so Rita's gonna come in and she's gonna tell you more of the facts. I'm just supposed to pass it off to her. But I've been shooting with Canon my entire professional career and what is about to unfold is one of, if not the most exciting update since to date. So Rita, before I blow it all, I'm gonna hand it over to Rita Dubay who's got the longest professional title that I've ever seen. I actually had to write it down on my phone because I was like, what? She's the Senior Director of Customer Experience Marketing for Canon USA. I probably could have remembered that, but I didn't want to mess it up, Rita, because it's such a good title. Floor is yours. Thank you, Peter. I don't know how I'm going to follow that intro, but I'm definitely going to give it a try, so here we go. Welcome, everyone. First, let me say that I hope you're all doing well and staying healthy. We are really excited to have you here with us today. Now, Canon has been pretty busy. We've been introducing a lot of exciting things like the 1DX Mark III camera, the photographer community called Rays that aims to inspire, educate, and also challenge its users, and the new Image Connect photographer matching service that aims to match photographers with potential clients. And both of these services are available to our US customers. And also we have our new cloud platform, image.canon, that aims to improve your image workflow. And finally, we can't forget the EOS webcam utility beta software that now has helped turn your EOS camera into a webcam. 
we've been keeping really busy because we want to provide you solutions and also to keep inspiring you and improving your workflow. Well, we have some more news for you today. We are finally going to give you the full details that you've been waiting for on the EOS R5 camera. Not only that, we are also going to be giving you a ton of information on new gear. And this includes the EOS R6 camera, the ImageProGraph Pro 300 printer, four lenses, two extenders, new printer software, as well as paper. Wow, that's a lot. And uh, we've been waiting a long time to share all of this information with you. And we think it's good, like really good. But now it's time for you to see for yourself and you can make your own judgment and decide. Now today you will hear the ins and outs about each of these products from our own Canon experts as well as some professional photographers that we've been working with and they've had the first dibs on trying to work on these products firsthand. And these include Canon Ambassador Peter McKinnon, Explorer of Lights Lindsay Adler, Sal Sincata, Roberto Valenzuela, Vanessa Joy, Joel Grimes, as well as Rick Salmon who have all gotten first exclusive access to using these products and putting them to the test and we can't wait to show you what they've created. Now, let's kick it off with Canon Tech Advisor Drew McCallum and the EOS R5 camera. Thanks, Rita. Hello, and once again, welcome to my home office here in New York. Back in April, we dropped some information about the upcoming EOS R5. It was mostly about the video features of the camera. Well, I'm here today to tell you as much as I can about the EOS R5 and to provide first-hand reports from some of our creators who've had a chance to work with the camera and lenses you'll hear about. With the introduction of these two cameras today, we're giving image makers and videographers some options to choose from to create their work. I know there's many questions as to why two different cameras? Do you need the highest performing Canon mirrorless camera for your work every day? Or are you a content creator, enthusiast, or advanced amateur who needs high quality and functions, but a lower price point? I know there's been a lot of discussion and debate on the resolution of the EOS R5. So to put that discussion into overdrive, the EOS R5 will have a brand new, Canon designed and manufactured 45 megapixel CMOS sensor. This new sensor will offer incredible image detail and expanded dynamic range. Paired with the Digic-X image processor that was first introduced with the EOS 1DX Mark III, this camera will have incredible processing power, capable of shooting at 12 frames per second mechanical and 20 frames per second silent shutter, including autofocus and auto exposure. This camera will feel at home in portrait and fashion studios, out in the field for landscapes, wildlife, and nature, or the press rooms of our nation's capital. We've also pushed the boundaries for viewfinder use. With 100% viewfinder coverage with 1,053 automatic autofocus zones, so no matter where your subject is in the viewfinder, you will not be limited in your compositional creativity. Combine this with face, eye, and head detection, similar to what you see in the live view shooting of the EOS 1DX Mark III for people and now including eye, face, and body tracking for dogs, cats, and birds, having faith your subject is in focus has never been easier. With these features and more, we wanted to see in the real world what this camera was capable of. So we gave the camera to a few photographers to see what they could do. As a special treat to you all watching, you're about to be the first to see an exclusive video captured with the EOS R5, done by vlogger, content creator, and coffee aficionado with over four and a half million subscribers on his YouTube channel, Peter McKinnon. When you hear the word artist, you might think of a painter, a museum, fancy degree. When I hear the word artist, I think of my friends, the local restaurant owner, a little kid sitting under a blanket with a flashlight dreaming of the stars. An artist isn't bound by the restrictions of society. An artist doesn't see the world in straight lines. An artist finds comfort in the unknown. A place where we can express our most inner feelings through our works without bounds. A limitless expression of freedom. Some use cards, some use notes. Some use endurance, some use precision. But we're all ultimately arriving at the same place. A place where titles and hierarchies disappear and we're only left with what we love. Our passion to create.
It would take much longer than I have in this segment to cover all the additions and features of the EOS R5, so let's speak to a couple of our photographers who have had the chance to work with the Canon EOS R5. Fashion photographer and Canon Explorer of Light, Lindsay Adler, and portrait and wedding guru and Canon Explorer of Light, Sal Sincata. Welcome to you both. I'm so glad to have you here virtually. So welcome, guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Lindsay, you did some behind the scenes of your session. Let's take a quick look at that short clip. Sal, you shoot stills and video for your clients, so let's take a quick look at the segment from your shoot. Uh, so, Lindsay, you were one of the first to use the, the EOS R two years ago, and uh, you had a chance to work with the R5 recently, and tell me, what were your first impressions as you, as you unboxed the camera, started working with it in your studio? Well, <laughs> so to be honest, I felt like a little camera photo nerd. It was so exciting because... As I started to play with it, I realized it was the best of every world, like all the things I was excited about. Uh, fundamentally, I was like, wait, this feels and functions like a 5D4. Oh, wait, but it has the mirrorless elements of the R. Oh, wait, it has all these other great things. So it was just like, thank you guys, this is what we wanted. Uh, the other thing that was, was fantastic was that when I put it to my eye for the first portrait, the way that with the eye tracking, uh, the face tracking and, and uh, eye detection, it was like lightning fast. I'd never really experienced anything like that before. So it got me thrilled. Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. We've really upped a lot of the features and functions that the, the customers requested. They, they said, we want this, we want this, we want this. This camera is a, a true five lineage. So if, if it carries that moniker, it's gonna have to, to work in the way that, that you and Lindsay need it to work every day. Um, it's a workhorse. It's, it's going to uh, really be that powerhouse to, to be that one camera in your studio that you use all the time for just about every type of uh, gig that you, you have thrown in front of you, whether it's video or stills. I, think, I mean, it's just, it's got to be versatile. So I think versatile is the right word though, right? If you're doing any kind of work today, there's always a video element to it, right? Whether it's social media and stories, and so to have a camera like this that really can, within, in a switch, uh, go from you know, high performance stills to high performance video, that is a tool in my arsenal that I think is gonna allow me to stand out from my competitors. When you have more resolution, you can adjust more with your images. You can now punch into those images as needed without losing resolution. Uh, and then in the post-production workflow, look, we're all touching our images. We're not shooting film. Uh, these images are gonna go into some sort of post-production workflow and more importantly, as a wedding photographer, I'm trying to sell large portraits to my clients. I wanna put that 30 by 40 or larger on the wall. I need that resolution to sell large prints. So I would rather have it than not. Right, and there's always that, that pixels per head, pixels per face. So you have a big group, a bridal portrait or a wedding party itself. That's a lot of people in, in a file that you wanna have everybody tack sharp, that, uh, that dress, the shoes, the, the tux. Everything's gotta be sharp, especially in those big groups, right? Well, I do wanna say something about groups. Any wedding or, portrait or a family portrait photographer can probably relate uh, to this statement. I have yet in my career to take a frame with five kids in it, three kids and two parents, 
uh, or a wedding bridal party where everyone is looking uh, at the camera. And if you're the person who's doing it, please come teach me how to do it because it's like chasing uh, <laughs> squirrels, right? I mean, you just cannot get them there. And so there is that element of compositing uh, that happens after events like this. And I, w again, need those pixels so that these images don't fall apart on us. Very cool. That, yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of resolution for some to handle, but at the same time, it's going to be one of those resolutions that people, they need it. It's just there. It's, it's like we said, versatile, and that's why, that's why it's there. It's what it's there for. You've always got options like C-RAW and smaller uh, functionalities, smaller JPEGs. Those, those are always there, but when you need it, you've got the power behind you. So, but Drew, uh, we shouldn't underestimate the, the speed of the camera. I think that's important to understand. You know, in, in the past, and even on some uh, models that are on the market today, the larger file size is writing slower. And I did not experience uh, on our shoot, and when people see that video, they're gonna see like, we're, we're moving, we've got action, we're throwing a veil. Uh, we did not run into performance problems with the camera. So I think kudos to Canon, did an incredible job of making sure that the buffer, the memory, uh, you know, the read-write is happening at a speed that's keeping pace with a working pro. With the R5 now, I'm not, ha I'm not seeing that lag. So the speed of the EVF was, uh, made me very, very happy. Lindsay, how about you? What are your top three of the EOS R5? Well, I wanna start by building off of what Sal just said about it changing the way you shoot. So I don't know if other photographers are like me, but I was used to be terrified of shooting at 1.2. 1.2 is such a tiny, narrow depth of field that when it was a paid job, there's no way I was going to risk it. And the other day, just for the heck of it, I said, I'm only going to shoot wide open. I had the RF 85 1.2 at 1.2 the whole time. And it, I mean, the camera changed the way I can shoot. I can confidently shoot wide open and know that I'm nailing the shots because of the face tracking and eye detection, right? Um, then after that, I would say also related to focus would be the 100% autofocus coverage from side to side because um, very often I am shooting unusual compositions or I have my subject moving around, I want that flexibility. Uh, and I love that no longer is focus and recompose a thing. Like, I don't, I don't think I ever mastered that, that whole idea. <laughs> no one did. No one did. Yeah. And so the fact that it's gone, oh, man, I'm jealous for the future generations of photographers that never have to suffer through that. So. Right. You don't know what it's like to take a blurry picture. <laughs> they won't. It's totally, totally right. They, they won't have to suffer through that. Um, and then I think the, I think the third thing, I guess it's, it's kind of a, a spec, but just the fact that the camera accomplishes so many things in one. So the fact that it has so many video capabilities, um, because I'm going to be using this camera sometimes to direct. Uh, there's a lot of times where in a commercial shoot, I'm actually shooting stills and I'm directing little pieces. Maybe it's going to be for a web ad. Maybe it's going to be for just a little piece on social, but I can also use the camera for things like I can do right now, like recording myself for tutorials. So right. I just loved that, yeah, for my job, all the important parts of, of a, what I need out of a still camera are there, but I don't need something extra and another camera to achieve what I need out of video. I will say when I got the camera, the first thing I did was check to see how much Canon listened. So I go, okay, let's see, oh, yep, dual card slots. Okay, everyone's going to be happy. And they went to the back and I'm like, oh, yep, joystick, got it back. Everyone's going to be happy. So that was one of the first yeah. things I did, pick up the camera and I was like, Canon listened, they care. So that was a good one. It's the little things. <laughs> yeah, it's the little so, things yeah, that are is. big that things. Is. So uh, Lindsay, any, any closing comments or thoughts or things that we don't need to think we didn't get to that you wanna really make sure that Lindsay's voice is heard? Yeah, well, no, I was going to mention that uh, one of the things I didn't, I didn't bring up was the in-body stabilization. Um, you know, there's a few lenses that I use very often that do not have stabilization built in. And mm -hmm. uh, when I was actually shooting for the first time, I was shooting this kind of this burlesque scene. It was meant to be old Hollywood. And as I was shooting, I was thinking, you know, old Hollywood usually had really narrow depths of field. And I was using strobes at the time. And I was like, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't seem right. I, I should probably use these as hot lights like it would be in old Hollywood. So I switched off my strobes and I was shooting narrow depths of field, but even then my modeling lights weren't that strong. And so it ended up being, I was shooting 
I think it was at a sixth of a second. And I was like, oh man, okay, maybe, you know, should I pop up in my ISO? Maybe I should go higher. And then I was tethered and I'm looking, I'm like, nope, <laughs> they're sharp. I don't need to. So it was really nice to see that in action in a practical situation because usually people think just bump up the ISO, but it, it wasn't necessary. The shot that I'm talking about in particular, uh, the one that it was just crazy milky backgrounds at like a sixth of a second was with the 8512, the RF 8512. Nice. Yeah, I can't wait to see what you get, especially on the, the fine art side, because, you know, following in Lindsay on Instagram is pretty insane. Oh, thanks, Drew. How about you, Sal? <laughs> any, any last little uh, uh, comments or thoughts or things that you really want to get across to, to people that are taking a look or thinking about the R5? Yeah, if you're, if you're a wedding or portrait photographer and you're an, on the fence at all about this camera or if it's right for you, I'm telling you, we have bet our entire business uh, on this platform. So as an active wedding and portrait photographer, we are using this in our business uh, and uh, I could not be happier. The tech is what moved me to mirrorless. Awesome. Well, I know you guys have a lot going on right now. And so I'll let you get back to your extremely busy days. And I can't wait to see more of what you guys do with your content and your videos that we're going to be pushing out over the next couple of weeks. Thank you both for being here. I appreciate Thanks it. For having us. We'll be seeing a lot of photos and videos and behind the scenes footage from our EOLs at work with the new EOS R5. So make sure you go to our website after this broadcast to see those amazing pieces. We'll be showcasing how the new EOS R5's features such as IBIS with up to eight stops of correction, animal eye and body autofocus, the return of the joystick and other requested changes. So keep an eye open for those articles and videos. Now the EOS R5 is not just an incredible stills camera. We wanted to make sure today's photographers, videographers are able to integrate this small full frame camera into their creative outlets, be it high end stills or video. We gave the camera to Explorer of Light, Tyler Stableford, who has to create not just impressive stills for his high end customers, but cinema like production video for commercials and corporate use. Here's a quick teaser of the video he shot for us with the new EOS R5. I've been waiting for a camera like this. Honestly, I was blown away when I heard the specs. Right out of the gate, the R5 has 8K full frame raw report. And it can shoot 4K up to 120 frames per second, full frame. Beautiful stuff, okay. We are moving on to the barbell. This is a shoot that demanded high dynamic range camera. It's a shoot where a lot of cameras could fail. The R5 is giving us a new level of ability to work with light, to work with emotion in a handheld sized body. I think it'd be easiest since we've got our fill here. The R5 is the first Canon camera to have in-body stabilization. This to me is a game changer. It makes my skills as a cinematographer look better. On this shoot, I found myself stripping down a lot of the accessories and just being able to hand hold it. Super cool, I mean, it's handheld. For both video and stills mode, the sensor has a dual pixel autofocus. I found I could tap right on the touch screen of the R5 for face and eye tracking. And then as I recompose the shot, it's tracking right onto his eye. It is up to speed with the best autofocus cameras out there. Let's go to stills. Okay. Get right at the camera here. In stills mode, the R5 has a 45 megapixel sensor and it shoots 20 frames per second with a silent electronic shutter. Perfect, perfect, thank you. The R5 has fully won me over to a mirrorless system. I know there's so many more features to discuss and to show you, but unfortunately my time is up. Right now I'd like to pass it over to my friend and colleague, technical specialist Brandon Chin. Thanks Drew and hello everyone. The EOS R5 is truly a revolutionary new product that will impress all different types of image makers. If you're one of those people that crave high performance, but you might be on a budget, we at Canon, we hear you. So I'm excited to introduce to all of you and the world, the EOS R6. This is a completely reborn six series product with our latest and greatest technologies inside. If you've ever dreamt about owning an EOS R5 or an EOS 1DX Mark III for that matter, this full frame body is 
exports Canon DNA from both of those outstanding cameras. If you're an EOS R owner, well, this camera also realizes much of the feedback that we've learned firsthand from your fellow EOS R owners. To bring high performance imaging capability, advanced feature set, and outstanding control to the advanced creator. This creates a powerful lineup of EOS R series cameras to match our already impressive RF and EF series optics. With the EOS R6, you'll find a 20 million pixel full frame image sensor, as well as a Digic X processor. This is the same image processor and base image sensor combination that is featured in our flagship EOS 1DX Mark III camera. So this means outstanding high performance imaging fit for nearly all genres of photography. But here's the kicker. The EOS R6 features Canon's new in-body image stabilizer. This is the same one that can be found in the EOS R5. And this is for use with both non-stabilized and optically image stabilized lenses. With this sensor and processor combination, the EOS R6 is truly a hot rod capable of frame rates of up to 20 frames per second in silent shutter mode and 12 frames per second in mechanical shutter mode. So regardless of what type of photography you do, this means speed, stealth, and versatility to get your shots when they matter the absolute most. And we didn't stop there. A working image maker requires consistent and reliable autofocus. And the EOS R6 features the same autofocus system as the EOS R5. The most powerful dual pixel CMOS autofocus system to date. Dual pixel CMOS autofocus 2. This new system with 100% coverage brings consistent and new compositional control to your fingertips. With 1053 automatic selection autofocus zones that work with an improved eye detection autofocus algorithm and head detection autofocus adopted from the EOS 1DX Mark III. If you photograph people at all, you should know that dual pixel CMOS autofocus just got that much better. We've even added Canon's newest autofocus method, animal detection autofocus, with the ability to focus on a body, face, or eye of dogs, cats, or even birds. Vloggers and video creators, we did not forget about you. If you've been looking for a UHD 4K capable camera, the EOS R6 has it with up to 60 frames per second recording. It also has full HD recording at up to 120 frames per second and features beautiful dual pixel CMOS autofocus 2 available in all recording modes, making EOS R6 comfortable in all different types of recording scenarios. Beyond the in-body image stabilizer, it also has 10-bit analog and zebras, making it a very capable and high performance video machine. Those of you that requested advanced features for the next EOS R, we listened. Features such as dual UHS-2 SD card slots are now available for more peace of mind and better workflow. There's now more control than ever with a multi-controller joystick and dual quick control dials. When adding these dual quick control dials to the main dial near the shutter button and either a control ring or a control ring mount adapter, this will give you four total controls at your fingertips. And to top it all off, there's a beautiful high resolution OLED electronic viewfinder with 120 frames per second refresh rate meaning the EOS R6 is ready for your next project. Now, since we only have a short amount of time available to chat about the EOS R6, the last thing we want to do is read off a spec sheet that you can easily find on our website. Instead, to help me explain the feature set of this amazing EOS R6, we have two special guests from our Explorer of Light team. My friends, please join me in welcoming the amazing and talented Vanessa Joy and Roberto Valenzuela. So welcome, Vanessa and Roberto. Thank you so much for joining us. So how excited are you to talk about this new EOS R6? Very, very. I feel like it's been the best kept secret for a long time and I just can't wait to get it out. It's definitely been like a juicy secret out there. Everyone on YouTube is trying to figure out what's happening with this R6 and it's been really fun not only having it in my hands but also photographing the whole campaign and seeing how revolutionary this camera really is. All right, everyone, you just heard a ton of speeds and feeds. Let's talk about what really matters to two of our greatest pros on our Explorer Lite team. So as fast as you can, what are your top three favorite things about the EOS R6? I'm stealing this first because I bet you Roberto is going to have similar <laughs> favorite things. Uh, but one of mine is just how versatile it is. You know, everyone needs a camera that does everything these days. So I was able to shoot this camera as a hobbyist, as a professional, as a mom, as a streamer, as a YouTuber. So just that you can do so much with it. Secondly, it would be the price. The price is 
pretty accessible for a lot of people and to have this much power for that, you know, power for that buck is just wonderful. And then lastly, I have to say uh, the autofocus. The autofocus, it has 100% changed the way that I take pictures for the better. First of all, the controls look, the controls are extremely familiar to all of us. You know, coming, coming from the 5D series, having that aperture wheel back and the multi-controller and everything that just, you know where everything is and we have this muscle memory that we are very used to. We want to make sure that we continue with that and this camera finally brought back everything we used to have and it's been such a, such a, such a joy using it. Uh, like Vanessa said, the autofocus is just nothing short than remarkable, incredible jaw dropping. It's incredible for videos, incredible for photos. It's great for professionals, great for an amateur. It's great. The price point, like Vanessa said, is very, very nice. It's very accessible in that package. I mean, this camera is pretty amazing. Well, Roberto, you've been on our EOL team for a number of years. You're one of the first people that had access and got to play around with our uh, new EOS R when it first debuted. Uh, let's have a look at your video that you produced with the EOS R6. This time, Canon really knocked it out of the park with the release of the Canon EOS R6. You have the perfect combination of everything you love about the 5D series, but you, they combined it with everything you love about mirrorless technology. So for all of our viewers out there, uh, Roberto, what's actually hanging behind you? Well, the camera is 20 megapixels, the R6. The R5 is 45, but the, the R6 is 20. So I decided to show people, since I'm a big advocate of printing, I wanted to show everybody lo looking at this press conference that this is, a, this is a 30 by 46 or something like that inch photograph that I printed on my Canon Pro 4000 and I just taped it to this existing frame that I had just to show you the detail on this print at 20 megapixels this is like life-size photo this is a life-size photograph printed uh, on the Pro 4000 and you can see every cloth every time you can see the texture of the clothing she's wearing is stacked sharp actually it's probably the biggest one in my studio now and it was shot with a 20 megapixel camera so I wouldn't let that get to your head at all awesome thanks for sharing with our viewers now, of course. when you look at the EOS R6, it shares the same uh, processor, DigiX processor, and same base image sensor design as what you can find in our EOS 1DX Mark III. So for all of our viewers out there, uh, Vanessa Joy is easily the biggest 1DX advocate I've ever met. Uh, Vanessa, what did you think about the image quality from the EOS R6 and how it compares with the EOS 1DX Mark III? You know, knowing that the same sensor and processor was in now this mirrorless camera, one, I think we all sort of knew that hybrid that the 1DX3 is was a little bit of foreshadowing of what was coming, but working with the same sensor and processor in now a smaller camera, lightweight camera, mirrorless camera, it gave me confidence in knowing what to expect. And then also knowing that it was able to work with really high ISOs. So I'm a wedding photographer. I'm photographing in churches that are super dark, have red carpet, nothing but stained glass windows, lighting, whatever is going on. And I'm not allowed to use flash. So now I can be confident in, you know, that sensor, that high ISO capability. I was, pushing this camera to 3200, 6400, no problem whatsoever uh, in a dark nightclub scene. And it, it was totally fine. The quality was great. And being able to push it and have that kind of confidence when I'm shooting just adds a whole nother layer to what I can do. So for our viewers out there, Vanessa has been keeping herself very busy uh, during all this lockdown. <laughs> Uh, let's queue up your video, give everybody a, a bit of a glimpse of what you've been doing.
you've been getting really, really familiar with the EOS R6. You shot some photos, you shot some amazing video content. Uh, talk to me and our viewers about the uh, mixed media versatility of this new camera and what some of our video creators will actually be able to expect. When I first got the camera, that was one of the things that hit me. It's like, wow, there's a lot of video in here. And I knew not only was there a lot of video capability, but photo as well. I just, I wanted to run this camera through the ringer. So I had it in the hands of travel vloggers and, you know, behind the scenes on shoots and moms and my kid and having it track my kid while shooting video or photo. It, you know, does them both very seamlessly, which is a great benefit for someone like me who does shoot both photo and video. It was, it passed like all the tests. And I know Roberto can attest to this too, because he has a two and a half year old also. And this camera can keep up with that crazy child running around, eye focus right there and being able to work with both photo and video that quickly is remarkable. Now, segueing a little bit, the EOS R6 features our new in-body image stabilizer. Roberto, I know you shoot a lot with the 28 to 70. Vanessa is one of the biggest advocate of prime lenses. Every time I've ever seen her, she's got a prime lens. Uh, tell, <laughs> tell me your thoughts on this, because this is a really revolutionary new, new feature for a lot of people. What's really exciting is that some of the most useful lenses in our arsenal can actually achieve eight stops of image stabilization. So you could shoot at very low shutter speeds and be perfectly stable. For example, the 24 to 105 f4 eight stops of image stabilization. The 28 to 70 f2, eight stops. These are some of the most useful lenses that we have, and we have that ability to stabilize, you know, low shutter speed. Sometimes we work in low light. Sometimes we work in conditions that require us to be super steady. We don't have to worry about that anymore. This, this camera has really freed you up to be able to be rest assured, trust the technology, and take your photographs. So I'm, I'm just really pumped up about this IBIS technology they put on the cameras. Uh, so I, I do shoot some video. I don't shoot a ton of it, but anytime I do shoot, the one thing I hate more than anything about video is having to put my camera on a tripod or a monopod. I hate it. I shoot very fast. I move around and having sticks is like, you know, practically chaining me to my camera and in my spot. So you know, the in-body in image stabilization allows me to more freely just handhold the camera or, you know, lean against a wall or put my elbows on something. So now it, it's definitely much more pleasant shooting video when I don't have to be on sticks. Yeah, and this is a really amazing system, very user-friendly. Uh, when you think about it, longer focal lengths really benefit from built-in optical image stabilization. The wider lenses really will benefit from having uh, the in-body image stabilization. So both these new systems of in-body image stabilizer will actually work complementary to each other. There's certain times where you'll have more of a ratio one way or the other way, but having both in your, your, your toolbox, if you will, is going to help a lot of photographers and uh, cinematographers, videographers, uh, go and really make new content that's going to be high image quality and obviously uh, beautiful, un unchaining them, as, as Vanessa said. Well, I want to take the time to thank both Roberto and Vanessa for joining us today. And unfortunately, that's all the time we have for the EOS R6 and the input side of Canon. So to keep the new products coming your direction, I'm going to introduce my good friend and technical advisor, Mr. Jim Booth, to talk to you about the output side. So take it away, Jim. Thanks, Brandon. Wow, how about those new cameras? I know that everyone is excited to go out and create stunning images with the EOS R5 or R6. But remember, an image is not a photo till it's printed. Today, we are happy to announce we are adding to our line of Image ProGraph Pro Series printers with the launch of the 13-inch Image ProGraph Pro 300, continuing to deliver output solutions for creative professionals who are equally obsessed with the printed image. The Pro 300 is the newest printer in the Image ProGraph Pro Series lineup to deliver on that promise. Let's go over some key features of the printer and later we'll speak with Canon Explorer of Light, Joel Grimes, so that he can share his thoughts after he had some hands-on experience with the printer. The new Pro 300 uses a nine color plus chroma optimizer Lucia Pro ink set, 
When compared to the current Pro 10 Lucia ink, it offers an expanded color gamut and enhanced black density, which are both vital elements for creative production. This model utilizes a new matte black ink with higher density than that found in the Pro 1000 and Pro 10. This new ink helps create smooth tonality throughout your final print. The new Image Prograph Pro 300 comes equipped with technologies to help eliminate some common printing pains. First, the skew correction, which is a built-in mechanism that straightens the paper fed diagonally from the top tray or the manual feed tray. This helps reduce printing errors by ensuring accurate feeding, especially on thicker media. Another is the nozzle recovery system. Ink nozzles are carefully checked by sensors. If a clog is detected in one nozzle, others will automatically compensate for it. This works to prevent print failures due to banding and reduces the need for head cleanings. We have also improved media compatibility by adding panorama paper sizes, which Angelica will talk to you about in a little bit, and longer user-defined sizes. You can now create custom paper sizes up to 39 inches, extended from the Pro 10's maximum of 26.6 inches. With a three inch LCD, USB, ethernet, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connectivity, complementing all of the other features I've already shared with you. I'm confident that this printer will deliver the results you've come to expect from Canon. But don't take my word for it. Let's hear what Canon Explorer of Light Joel Grimes has to say about this new Pro 300. Thanks for taking some time with us today, Joel. You and I had the pleasure to work uh, a couple of years ago on the Pro 1000 launch. And now that we're adding the Pro 300 to that lineup of printers, can you tell me a little bit about what you've seen and uh, how you would compare its quality and usability? Well, the first thing I do is I kind of see how easy it is to set up uh, because uh, we're not all technically, uh, I guess, you know, uh, engineer minded. Uh, and the 300 was actually really easy to set up. You go through the steps. It actually on the screen itself, on the on the printer, it tells you what steps to do. Got that all set up. Um, and I always make a black and white image first off a printer because if it goes and gets me the continuous tones that I really like in black and white, then I know I've got a good printer. And that was the, here's the first uh, image that I made of one of my cowboys uh, that I just did recently. And it looks absolutely stunning. Anything else about the usability or the quality that you would want to call out? You know, that sort of like, okay, st step number one. Then I start working on the color and here's some absolutely stunning, beautiful prints that I did of, of more cowboys. And so I just look at the, um, you know, the tonal range and the detail. I feel like a little kid in a candy store every time a print comes off the, um, uh, the printer. And, and so that's what I, I live for. I live for seeing my work in print. To me, I still feel like the print is the ultimate statement that I can make as an artist. So that's what I, every time I think about it, uh, an image that I'm creating, I ask myself a question. Can, would, I, would I hang this on my wall? Now, not every picture you're going to hang on your wall, but that's my goal. And so if I do get a picture that I love and I make it in print form and I put it in a frame and I hang it on my wall, that, that's a huge statement. How do you think photographers can leverage print to increase their bottom line? Obviously, a lot of photographers are, are sole proprietors and run their own business. Do you think that there's a way that, that they can include print to, to make more money? Yeah, I had, a, I had a guy come up to me after I gave a lecture and he said, I want to shake your hand. And I said, oh, yeah, OK, sure. He said, you've made me a lot of money. And I said, I have. Uh, do I get a, a cut on that? <laughs> and we kind of joking. And he said, look, I've been a photographer. Uh, he was about my age, so, you know, young guy. but he he said, look, I, I do senior high school portraits. I've been doing it for years. I have five photographers that are on my, uh, you know, work for me on my staff. And we, we do a pretty good job. And he said, I saw one of your composites and of the sports with an athlete with a stadium background. And he said, that is what I want to do. And my photographer said, what are you doing? That's going to take way too much time and we can't recoup the, the, the time back and make the money on it. He said, no, I want to do this. So he did it. And so the first time he had a mom and the son come in to look at the proofs, all mounted on an easel. 
And at the time he said, our most expensive package that we were offering was $1,200. And he said, just by chance, I thought, I'm gonna put a $2,400 price tag on that one print, just to see what would happen. And he said, the mother walked out with that print. Uh, there is a power in the emotional side of seeing a print and it is profitable for your business. So I always tell people, the investment you make on a printer will return a hundredfold, if not more. Excellent. Well, Joel, we definitely appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule to, to sit down with us and talk a little bit about printing and the new Image ProGraph Pro 300. So, so thanks again. All right, Jim. Thank you. Next up is Senior Marketing Specialist Angelica Lee to share more details about the printing workflow. Thanks, Jim. Now that you've captured amazing images with the EOS R5 and EOS R6 and have the Image ProGraph Pro 300 ready to go, it's time to print. And you just heard from Jim and Joel that there's nothing to fear. It's never been easier to bring your images to life with the Canon Professional Print and Layout software, PPL for short. An essential part of the Image ProGraph Professional Photo Output Workflow Canon specifically designed PPL utilizing our input to output expertise. The result is a printing solution that gives photographers a way to make great prints easily and efficiently. PPL simplifies the printing workflow so you can spend more time focusing on your art and less on print settings. With PPL, you can create beautiful lab quality prints right in your own studio with consistent results you can repeat over and over again. You also won't skip a beat with PPL as it integrates seamlessly into your existing photo workflows. You can use it as a standalone application or an export module plugin out of your favorite image editing software. PPL's intuitive interface organizes all the important print functions in one space, including an at-a-glance print preview and complete print settings area, making it simple to produce prints exactly as you envisioned. We could spend hours diving into all the great printing functions in PPL, but here are some highlights for today. See and control what is in your final print with a large print preview. You can adjust the size, crop, and color of your image and see how it'll look on the final paper size. Enjoy flexible output with three layout modes, single image with choice of border or borderless, multiple images on a page, and gallery wrap with split image handling. With powerful yet simple to use color handling, you can easily apply an ICC printer profile under color management, or for monochrome prints, select black and white photo mode for a higher level of precision and greater subtlety. You can then use pattern print under color settings to view adjustments in a single print, so you can visually select what looks best and input the color adjustments for the perfect black and white print. Then save your custom settings so it's even easier to print exactly what you want every time. Canon photographers can also take full advantage of Canon's own input to output data to reproduce the finest details with DP raw print and create one shot HDR prints with HDR printing. With Canon professional print and layout, turn your captured images into amazing tangible prints. From input to output, Canon has the solutions to ensure that you get stunning image quality every step of the way. Now, just as important as your printer and image are to the quality and impact of your final print is the paper. Over the years, Canon has carefully crafted a collection of the most common and frequently used paper surfaces, while also working with popular paper manufacturers to optimize color profiles so customers can continue to use niche and specialty papers on our printers. We're now further expanding the Canon paper line so that photographers can create works on media that best fits the photography, making images even more impactful in print. Our latest fine art paper in our collection has a smooth surface, so we wanted to complement that with a rough surface for more texture. So today, we're excited to introduce the newest paper finish to a professional photo paper lineup, Premium Fine Art Rough. A high quality cotton paper suitable for long-term storage, Premium Fine Art Rough has a lovely rough surface texture, which is perfect for adding a three-dimensional depth or an art painting effect to your images. And as always, with the combination of Canon Genuine Paper and Ink, you'll get the Canon level quality you expect in your final print. 
Now from their final printed image, let's go back to where we capture the light. I'd like to pass it over to Canon Technical Advisor Rudy Winston to introduce the newest glass to join our extensive lens lineup and also hear from our Canon EOL, Rick Salmon. Thanks Angelica and hi everyone. I'm Rudy Winston, a technical advisor at Canon USA. The Canon RF lens line has established itself from its beginnings as a showcase of outstanding optical technologies with renowned lenses that are a rock solid foundation for demanding professional photographers and videographers. But Canon continues to broaden the RF lens line with innovative and exciting lenses that are within reach of many enthusiast photographers as well as professionals. That continues today as we introduce three new Canon RF lenses with super telephoto capability. The Canon RF 100 to 500 mm f4.5 to 7.1 L IS USM, similar in concept and optical performance to the outstanding EF 100 to 400 mm L lens, this lens now zooms to 500 mm entering that threshold of super telephoto power for subjects like wildlife, nature, and sports. This totally new optical design is nearly half a pound lighter than the 100 to 400 millimeter lens as well. AF is powered by two nano USM focus motors, which are extremely fast during still image shooting, yet silent and smooth during video recording. It has up to five stops of optical image stabilization, works with the new RF 1.4 times and 2 times tele extenders and accepts 77 mm filters. This new 100 to 500 mm L series lens brings super telephoto power to the Canon RF lens series in a practical hand holdable package with professional sharpness, strength and weather resistance. Until now, super telephoto photography has been out of reach for many Canon customers. And even for those who can afford the cost of entry, issues like size, weight, and portability remained obstacles for many photographers. Canon now introduces a totally new concept. Incredibly lightweight 600mm and 800mm lenses designed for hand holding at unbelievably affordable prices. It's my pleasure to introduce the RF 600mm f11 IS STM and the RF 800mm f11 IS STM lenses. Their telephoto power can change the look of your photography and video. These are f11 lenses with a fixed f11 aperture. They're of course designed for outdoor shooting in daylight and utilizing the high ISO capabilities of today's full frame cameras in less than ideal conditions. But the trade-off is handling ease you must experience to believe. The 600 mm lens remarkably weighs less than the Canon RF 70 to 200 mm f2.8 zoom lens and about the same as an EF 85 mm f1.4 L lens. And the 800 mm lens weighs 2.8 pounds less than the EF version of Canon's famous 70 to 200 mm f2.8 L lens. Both have built-in optical image stabilization and will autofocus with any EOS R series camera. Remarkably, both accept Canon's new RF tele extenders, and the EOS R6 and R5 cameras will autofocus with either extender in place. Birds, wildlife, distant landscapes, outdoor sports, and other applications calling for the visual power of super telephoto lenses may have seemed beyond reach until now. As I said, the RF 600mm and 800mm lenses are a new concept in autofocus lenses, opening the door to imagery with impact and providing yet another reason for photographers to consider the Canon EOS R system. Let's talk to Canon Explorer of Light, Rick Salmon, who's had a chance to shoot with these lenses. Rick, really appreciate you spending a few minutes with us today to talk about your experience with these lenses. Which lenses did you work with? I work with the 600 millimeter, the 800 millimeter, and here the 100 to 500 millimeter, and all were totally awesome. Now that's terrific. How did that extra 100 millimeters uh, go into 500 millimeter change your, the, the way you were able to approach photographing a small subject like birds? Well, that's the thing. The, the smaller the subject, the closer you have to get. 
So that extra 100 millimeters, that extra 100 millimeters really makes a lot. You know, I was playing around also with the 1.4x converter and the 2x converter. But for my backyard bird photography, the 500 millimeter focal length, it was uh, totally fine. Mm -hmm. Terrific, terrific. Rick, speaking of dialing long distance with telephoto, you yeah. had a chance to work with the new 600 millimeter and 800 millimeter image stabilized lenses. Yep. Talk to us a little bit about your experience working with these lenses. How was the handling first off? How was the image quality? And in general, what was the experience like? Well, I think the image quality speaks for itself. You know, I, I'm making like, 20, I, on my printer over here, I'm making 17 by 22 inch prints. It's amazing. And when, bird, when it comes to bird photography, if you could see every feather, I mean, it's, a, it's amazing the image quality and that you could handhold these again for a long time. Rick, you put together a sample video yeah. of some of your work. Yep. How about if we take a look at that right now? Sounds great to me. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to start with my list of the top features I like about the camera that I feel will help you make better pictures. Okay, number one, focus tracking. Focus tracking helps you get sharp images of subjects that, get this, are even coming toward you. What's more, you can set the focus tracking on this camera to track people or animals. Setting the focus tracking to animals helped me get this amazing shot of this owl flying directly toward me. How cool is that? That's really excellent, Rick. Rick, one of the things about these two new lenses, the 600 millimeter and 800 millimeter, yep. are that they are fixed aperture right. lenses, not just fixed focal length, but fixed aperture right. at f11. How did you work with that in the situations that you shot with? Well, Rudy, the first time I heard about it, I said, you know, f11, that's it? Well, it's kind of like, you know, I play piano. And, you know, I, I have a, a grand piano with 88 keys, right? You could do a lot of stuff there, Mozart, Beethoven. <laughs> you know, they could do a lot of things with 88 keys. But I also have an electric piano with 73 keys and Beethoven and Mozart. And I, we could still make great music. So you have to get, you just have to accept that you have that fixed aperture. And what I do is I boost the ISO in low light conditions. And again, the image sensor on the R6 handles the noise so well, I'm shooting at ISO 10,000 and getting really cool shots. Rick, that's great. I wanna thank you so much uh, for being a part of this project, uh, for helping us tell the customers about these lenses as we introduce them to the marketplace. And I wanna thank you for spending time with us today. Really appreciate it. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Okay, I'll catch you later. Up next is my colleague, Canon Technical Advisor, Eric Stoner, to share one more lens with you. All right, thanks Rudy and Rick. That's some amazing insight into the new Super Telephoto lenses. Now, introducing the RF 85 millimeter F2 macro IS STM lens. And like its sibling, the RF 35 millimeter F1.8 IS STM lens, but different focal length. They both share the concept of an affordable fast aperture prime lens with half macro capability. The 85 millimeter medium telephoto focal length has long been a favorite of photographers shooting portraits, weddings, studio, and fashion, allowing the photographer to remain fairly close to their subject for easy communication, yet fulfilling the look achieved by using a telephoto lens. The bright F2 aperture not only lets ample light into the sensor, but also renders those creamy backgrounds desired by photographers when shooting at wider apertures. Now, in addition, specular highlights in the background are rendered beautifully thanks to the nine blade circular aperture. Tie that in with Super Spectre coatings to help reduce flare, and you have all the tools for making sharp, amazing images. Now, even with a fast F2 aperture, this lens features up to five stops of image stabilization, making it a go-to choice for photographers shooting in low light conditions. Personally, I can't wait to get my hands on this paired with the new EOS R5 and R6 cameras using IBIS or in-body image stabilization because of the combined effect of both of these types of stabilization. Certainly one feature I know most photographers will appreciate is the lens's macro focusing ability. This lens delivers tack sharp images, and I mean tack sharp images with close focusing down to 1.15 feet, or half life size. That makes it an extremely versatile tool for photographing small details, no matter what your subject is. In closing, I know in today's world, 
photographers are looking to lighten their load and weighing in at 1.1 pounds, they'll appreciate the compact size and weight of this great performing cost-effective lens, satisfying the needs of amateur photographers all the way through to the working professional. Thanks for watching, and now to wrap this up, I'm gonna to toss it back to my coworker, Rita Dubay. Rita? Thank you, Eric, so much. Now, everyone, we are so happy you were able to join us today. But are you still looking for more information? Why don't you join us tonight when the Canon Creator Lab and the Socality are hosting a live panel discussion featuring a group of photographers and Canon professional market specialist, Hanara Arroyo. You can submit your questions online and get them answered. Now to register, visit the link in the description below. And for more information on all the new products that were announced today, please visit this URL. Now, we hope you are as excited as we are to get back in the field and start creating. Thank you.